Did you know that a nuclear submarine can operate for 30 years without needing to refuel? <laughs> Stay tuned for more. Hey everyone, and welcome to XTEM All Access. I am Maynard Okereke, and I'm excited to be part of this series, showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. As your host for this episode, I'm excited to chat with Mr. John Ornelis. John is the Nuclear Engineering and Planning Manager for Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard, Hawaii's largest employer with highly skilled personnel who service the Navy's specific fleet of nuclear-powered submarines and conventionally powered surface ships. And you may be surprised to learn just how much the work happening on the Hawaiian Islands impacts us right here on the mainland. John, aloha. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you, Maynard, and, and, and Aloha from Hawaii here at Pearl Harbor. Um, I'm really excited to be here and appreciate the opportunity uh, to let us showcase the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. So i um, excited to be here and mahalo, looking forward to a good discussion. Okay, as someone who's also worked on nuclear submarines at a naval shipyard, I am so excited to learn more. So let's jump right in. John, what does the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard do and why is it important for Hawaii and the United States as a whole? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, Pearl, here at Pearl River Naval Shipyard, our main mission is to maintain, repair, and modernize Navy ships and submarines for the U.S. Pacific Fleet. We provide the ships and the, the combat power for the Navy to be able to defend our country, national defense, and keep our adversaries at bay. Uh, one of the main missions here uh, with the Navy is to make sure the sea lanes and oceans are safe for goods and trades. Uh, to come as well. So it's really protecting our way of life, right? A lot of us depend on the ocean to receive our goods and services that we buy in our in our stores and that we that receive. And it's, those oceans and sea lanes became unsafe um, uh, for goods and services to come first. That would, that would significantly affect our way of life. So what we do every day at Pearl Harbor Neighbor Shipyard does really protect our current way of life, um, both here in Hawaii and throughout, throughout the country. Um, here in Hawaii, we are also the largest employer here in Hawaii, uh, as we hire about 7,000 people, close to 7,000 people here at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard, uh, creating a lot of opportunities. And a lot of those jobs are STEM related, um, in, in technical trades, in engineering trades, uh, providing all kinds of opportunities for people to stay in Hawaii with good paying jobs, uh, to, to work in, in, in all the technology fields. That is incredible. Maintaining our ships, ensuring national security, and keeping our trade routes safe all at once. And of course, Hawaii's location right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean between the U.S. mainland and Asia makes the shipyard especially strategic for protecting those vital connections. You know, I bet most of us here on the mainland don't realize the vital work happening every day in Hawaii that affects all of us. So, John, with nearly 7,000 employees, there must be tons of different jobs at the shipyard to keep the Navy, submarines, and ships running smoothly. Probably too many to cover today. But can you tell us about a few important STEM-focused roles that students might not know about or might find interesting? Uh, yes, you are right. There, there are um, uh, a lot of jobs and opportunities here at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. We hire over 6,500 uh, employees, and a lot of those positions are in STEM-related fields. Uh, we hire all the engineering trades, um, electrical, mechanical, civil, structural, and out, and my, my own field is in nuclear engineering. Uh, we also hire STEM fields with, within the trades, like electricians, machinists and, and welders, and we have uh, jobs in computer science, information technology, quality assurance, testing, research and development, and uh, we even have branches in innovation. So there, there are a lot of opportunities here at the shipyard. I've, I've been working here 36 years. I love everything about the shipyard, uh, working with the people, the work we do on the submarines, the difference that we make here in defending our, our country. I, I don't think there's any place better to work. So. Wow. It sounds like there's a role for every STEM field at the shipyard. That is incredible. Your expertise in nuclear engineering plays a critical role in maintaining and modernizing the Navy's fleet of submarines. What's something surprising or really cool about working with nuclear-powered subs? Uh, dealing with nuclear power and working with nuclear power is just awesome. Uh, these submarines can operate 
in excess of 30 years while ever having to refuel, uh, which gives these submarines unlimited range. Uh, the only thing that limits them is the amount of food that they can carry. So um, fuel is unlimited. They also generate, can generate their own water and their own air so they can stay under uh, uh, for long, long periods of time. It's a very, very, very cool technology to be, to, to be working with. It also means uh, that we have to have very highly trained, highly skilled people uh, working with uh, technologies like nuclear power. Because some of the consequences that we've seen in the past from the commercial side, when, when things don't go right, as, as we saw like in Three Mile Island or in Chernobyl or in um, Fukushima, because we're working with nuclear power, we have to have highly skilled, highly trained people. We, we have to make sure that we do our jobs right every time. So we take our jobs very, very seriously. Uh, to make sure that our, our reactors operate safely. Um, and we, we've had an incredible safety record in the Navy. In the 60 years that we've operated um, reactors, we have never had any kind of, any kind of problem or accidents. Okay, Hold up. for those that didn't catch this, let me reiterate. John just said that these nuclear submarines can operate for 30 years without refueling. That is just absolutely crazy. So your career in the shipyard has spanned over 30 years, the same as the refueling time for a sub, ironically, and you've probably seen a lot of changes in the industry. Are there any cutting edge technologies or innovations on the horizon that will create exciting STEM job opportunities for students in the future? Yeah, we, I, I've definitely seen a lot of changes uh, here in the shipyard in, in my 30 years. But when, when I started here, we, we didn't have cell phones. We, we, we didn't have the internet. Uh, we used personal computers. Um, that were limited to storage on floppy drives. I think it was like 360 kilobytes of storage is what we had <laughs> per floppy disk. So uh, we've we've come a long way. Recently, we 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 did a a job where we did a repair on a valve on a submarine, uh, but the submarine uh, had to re remain at sea. So it came in for a weekend, and we digitally scanned like the whole engine room, uh, and it took precision measurements with these digital scans. The ship was able to go out to sea. We actually fabricated the entire repair assembly here at the yard, uh, flew it to a remote site, and then fit it up within, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch on each side uh, with, with, with no issues. So that's some of the things that technology can do for us now. Uh, we're starting to do more of that where, where we can actually do ship checks on, on submarines um, and actually take measurements while submarines are still at sea using, you know, digital twins and digi di digital digital scans of, of ships and engine rooms. So uh, we're, we're starting also getting to use AI with a lot of uh, analyzing data and, and how we analyze trends of data. So we're starting to use artificial intelligence for that, but we're just starting to use that. I see, I see us getting more and more into STEM-related type of fields and more technology. If you're not familiar with the concept of a digital twin, it is Pretty amazing. A digital twin is basically a super detailed virtual copy of something, like a submarine part in John's example. Engineers can scan the real part and create its exact 3D model on a computer. The concept of using digital twin technology to repair submarines while they're still out at sea is truly cutting edge innovation. Now, John, we've talked a lot about ships and submarines, but as an advocate for environmental protection, I can't miss talking about Hawaii's trademark beautiful and pristine environment. How does the shipyard help protect the island's land and ocean, as well as the creatures that call it home, while also working with powerful technologies like nuclear submarines and Navy ships? Yeah, the, the, the shipyard puts environment uh, as a high priority. In fact, we, uh, we put big focus on what we call protecting our four customers. And so we, uh, we work really hard to protect our workers, our sailors, the public, and the environment. Uh, particularly with the environment, we, uh, we make big investments. So we have a full staff of engineers and technicians, also STEM-related again, uh, focused on um, environmental processes, environmental engineers, to make sure that our processes uh, are in compliance uh, with the state. So we partner with the state, with the EPA. Uh, we have permits for our dry dock. We have permits for our paint boots uh, to make sure we're in compliance with the Clean Air Act, with the Clean Water Act. Um, we even take samples when there's uh, rain events to make sure that our stormwater runoff is clean and also in, in compliance with, with state and local regulations. We, we, we have taken um, 
environmental monitoring since the beginning uh, of our nuclear program over the last 60 years uh, and shared those sampling results of, uh, with the public, with the state that's available to the public. Uh, we have never had any kind of uh, adverse impact on our environment here in Hawaii. And uh, we are working hard to make sure that we never do. Uh, and we, we do make that investment to make sure we protect those four customers, uh, environment and public included. I've spent a lot of time traveling across the globe supporting various conservation efforts. And Hawaii in particular has incredibly important ecological concerns from sensitive coral reefs being impacted by climate change and ocean acidification to invasive species and of course the impact of urban development and tourism. So I love that you consider the environment as one of your customers. That is an approach that we certainly need more of across all industries. Now, before we sign off, can you share what kind of skills or training are needed for jobs at the shipyard? And how can students start preparing now? Are there opportunities for students right out of high school as well as those who go on to obtain college degrees? Here at Pearl River Shipyard, we, we are always looking for people to join our ohana uh, and our family that, that, that are hard workers, are critical thinkers, are looking for challenges and want to solve problems. Uh, every day. There are a lot of opportunities uh, here at the shipyard, uh, both for folks that come out of high school and for folks with college degrees. What can you do now to prepare for jobs here in the shipyard? First of all, it, I, I would focus on what's in front of you. So getting good grades in school, uh, that, that gets looked at actually when you get hired in, into a position in the shipyard. And then also making good decisions. Working at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard is a federal job that uh, does require a security clearance to work here because we because we work on classified uh, type of, type of issues for the military. So you have to have a security clearance here. Um, so you have to make good decisions now so so that you don't run into things that prevent you from getting the security clearance, like getting in trouble uh, with the law, having uh, criminal activity, even stuff like DUIs or having bad credit uh, can can impact your ability to obtain a security clearance. And without a security clearance, um, uh, you, you're not going to be able to, to to work a federal job like here at the shipyard. So making making good decisions uh, is what I would suggest that a, right now make good decisions and focus on getting good grades right now in school. Um, once you get a degree, we do have. Um, opportunities for folks in trades, like uh, welding, electricians, machinists, mechanics, all that is available. We even have an apprentice program where uh, we'll take high school students, bring them into the shipyard, train them in a trade, and also send them to community, Honolulu Community College at the same time. And in four years, they'll qualify to become a journeyman and come out with an uh, associate's college, college degree. Good grades and good decisions. Now that is great advice. John, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I truly enjoyed speaking with you and learning about the important work taking place at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. All right. Thanks again, Maynard, and mahalo for letting me be here today and uh, speak to you guys too, so we could showcase Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. Thanks to all the students out there for tuning in and for all your questions. And we look forward to See you with you and hopefully working with you in the future here at Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. Aloha. Mahalo to you as well. <laughs> Students, I encourage you to check out the career resource page to further explore related fields in shipbuilding, nuclear engineering, advanced manufacturing, and more, and the many career applications they have to offer. Also, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel in the description below and follow us on social media to get updates about new episodes. You do not want to miss any of them. Plus, you'll get access to fun weekly content for students and teachers. And don't forget to check out the library of episodes available on demand right here. Each one has a standard aligned lesson plan for students to use in the classroom. And each lesson also includes a career connection component so students can explore real world careers associated with the topic. I had an absolute blast being your host today. You can keep up with me and my own STEM adventures here. I'll catch you next time for more XSTEM All Access episodes where we'll meet more of the coolest minds in STEM. See you next time. <laughs>